gonna show you how to make one of the best kebabs ever. Hey Salam, I hope you guys are well. Halal Chef is back for another video. Halal Chef presents. First of all, let's start with prepping our kebab mixture. Grab your blender in with the red onions and I've got a green chili. Now the best kebab uses minimal ingredients. Cover and blend that into a fine paste. Now you want to pass this mixture through a fine sieve and get rid of the excess water. Otherwise they will fall apart. Using a spoon I'm just gonna go through the mixture just to ensure all the water is completely removed. And now just remove that paste onto your plate. Here I'm using some fresh coriander that you wanna finely chop. Also here I've got one large potato that has been boiled. Our right, first thing with the boiled potatoes. And we're gonna mash these. We're gonna make sure they are nice and smooth before we start incorporating in them. These are gonna do two things mainly. First, they're gonna act as a glue for our kebabs. Secondly, is to do with the texture. They're gonna add a bit more bite to our kebabs once they are ready. All right, so that's perfect. Now here I'm using a kilogram of beef mince. And now in that, I'm gonna mix in around 150 to 200 grams of fat. Now the fat will do two things. It will add more flavor. And again, it will also help in holding the kebab shape. Now in with our onion and chili paste, fresh coriander. A little bit of this fresh mint. Fresh mint with the meat goes very well together. On now with the coriander powder, red chili, some of this cumin powder, and finally with the salt. Bismillah. Now using your beautiful hands, you want to give this a really, really good mix. Mix it for at least 10 minutes so it's nicely combined. And you will know it's ready when it starts to stick to your hands. It smells amazing in the kitchen. Alright, so this is exactly what we're looking for. The mixture has become nice and sticky and it's ready to be used. Alright, now let's start shaping these. First of all, grab your kebab mixture. You will also need some water. What is going to help us easily mold the kebabs? And grab a plate as well. I'm going to grab some of the mixture in my hands. Now it's really up to you. You can turn them into a round shape or you can serve them on skewers. Dip my hand into the water and start turning this into a round shape. Touch your water when needed. That's exactly what we're looking for. Start placing them here. Let's grab another one. Now personally, I prefer this shape, it looks beautiful. And now for the skewers, first of all, I'm gonna grab a handful mixture. And I'm just gonna roll it around in my hand. So you're gonna grab your skewer now, and I'm just gonna place it here, like so. Touch your water when needed, turn it around. Now using this movement, you're gonna keep pushing the mixture down. Get comfortable with it, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just need to make sure you're turning it as you go around and use a touch of water when needed. See, it's beautifully coming along. You want to keep doing it a few times until you have the perfect shape. Now, some people like to make shapes like so. If you want, you can add those. That's exactly what we're looking for. I'm just going to start placing it here. You just need to practice it for a few times and you will get a hang of it. Excellent. It looks so beautiful. For the rice I'm using is Sela Basmati, you could also use normal Basmati instead. Now for this recipe you don't need to soak the rice in water. You just need to wash the rice a few times to remove the excess starch and then just set them aside. Here I've got around 4 cups of chicken stock. Now and then I'm gonna throw in some of the cassia bark, some of the cardamoms, cloves, some of the salt and I've got here black lime. So throw them all in. I'm also gonna add light touch of oil in there. Now let this come to a simmer. Now if you guys want you can make this stock at home. I will leave the link down below. Now when it starts to simmer we're gonna throw in our rice. Now the rice to water ratio really depends on whether you have soaked the rice or not. And it could also depend on the type of the rice you are using. Now you want to cover and let this cook until there is some water left. Alright, let's check this. Bismillah. So there is some water left as you can see. Just gonna mix that. So at this point in time you want to turn the heat to low. And now I'm gonna add in the saffron water on the top. Place a clean kitchen cloth on the top. Place your lid. And now we're gonna let this steam for around 15 minutes on low heat. So it's been around 15 minutes. Let's check this. I'm just gonna turn off the heat. The rice look absolutely amazing. Now if you guys want, you can add some of the ghee or butter onto there. I like to add some of the lemon juice. You know, adds a bit of freshness, a bit of tang to it. Carefully fluff these over with the help of a fork. Our simple yet delicious saffron rice. Done. Fatality. All right, to make our sauce, turn up the heat to our medium. Give it a good little foil. Oil is nice and hot and with the onions. A good mix through that and we're looking for a light brown color of those onions. Do not let anything burn. Deglaze with a touch of water if needed. Now we're going to start throwing our garlic into there. Grab your knife, slice. Deglaze. Now cook the rawness of the garlic as well. On any with your spices, I've got here salt, some of the coriander powder, chili and black pepper. Also with the green chilies. Now just cook the rawness of those spices as well. Lightly toast them. Once you have toasted this in with your passara, 
some of this fresh coriander along with the stems and now in with your chicken stock give that a mix and bring it to simmer and when it starts to simmer we're going to throw in our potatoes some of these carrots and chickpeas now give this a really good mix and we're going to let it braise on a low medium heat until everything is nice and soft i'm going to cover it with a cartridge which is basically a lid made of parchment paper this should take you around 10 to 15 minutes all right guys it's been around 13 15 minutes let's check this i'm going to carefully remove it let's give that a mix oh it smells absolutely amazing in here now let's get rid of this coriander Oh, so that looks amazing now you can adjust the consistency of the sauce by adding more water it looks amazing and it's gonna go perfect with our rice now finally i'd like to add some of the lemon juice into there or you can serve it later now if your sauce has too much acidity you can adjust it using some honey or sugar our mouth watering sauce with carrots potatoes and chickpeas done now you can either cook these on charcoals you can even shallow fry these in some clarified butter or you can broil them under the oven grill which is exactly what i'm gonna do now you want to grab yourself a tray on which we can place our skewers and now we're ready to cook these under the oven grill and what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep turning these like so the oven grill temperature has been set too high now once they're under the grill you want to keep turning these every few seconds this way they will not burn and they will stay nice and juicy from inside if you look closely this is the second rack by the way this should take you around 13 to 15 minutes these are one of the best kebabs that you can try you guys gonna absolutely enjoy this or you can see the kebabs are nice and sizzling keep turning them when needed outstanding Oh, so the kebabs are ready now let's remove them now this is totally optional but if you guys want you can also brush it on the hot key grab yourself a tissue and slowly remove them for the green and red chili sauce here are the green chilies two red chilies two bird's eye chilies it was some of this fresh zest of lemon and also in with the juice of fresh lemon don't use the straw bought one finally with some of this white vinegar and salt now cover and blend this until nice and sweet now this sauce is only meant to be served with the kebabs or the rice so don't start drinking it i don't want you guys to end up in the hospital <laughs> should halal chef have a little taste or you know what i'm gonna go for it Bismillah. Mm. it's so spicy so if you do like a bit of chili you know definitely try this our hot green and red chili sauce done all right guys, let's play this out. First of all, in with your eyes. Now in with your beautiful kebabs. Some of our red and green chili sauce. And finally, some of our sauce with some potatoes, carrots, and chickpeas. Now if you guys prefer, you can also serve it with some of the naan bread. Our mouth watering juicy kebabs with rice and sauce. Done. Trust me, you haven't tried kebabs like this before. Flawless victory. I'm gonna show you how to make one of the best Cajun chicken pasta. Let's start with seasoning our chicken with a cayenne pepper, garlic, cumin, coriander, white and black pepper, cardamom, allspice, smoked paprika, salt, oregano and finally some thyme. And add a good touch of oil in there enough to bring everything together. Give that a really good mix. Now for the chicken I'm using breast, you could also use thighs instead. Thighs are a bit more juicier than the breast but I like them both. Now you want to give this a really really good mix until everything is well coated. This pasta recipe is perfect for dinner. You and your family is going to absolutely love this. This is exactly what you're looking for. Now let it marinate for at least an hour. Perfect. Now for our main pasta ingredients, we're going to flavor with some of the whole garlic cloves. If you like a strong flavor of the garlic, then you can finally chop it. To add a bit of cake, I'm using a bird's eye chili. Remove the seeds if you don't like it too hot. I'm also going to use one of the red chili just to add a bit more flavor. Get rid of the seeds for this one. You want to finally chop the chilies. I'm also going to use some of the red pepper. Again, make sure to finally chop it so it will just melt away in the sauce. Now the heart of the sauce is gonna be these sun-dried tomatoes. Make sure to definitely use them, it's gonna have a lot of flavor. And these go amazing on pizzas as well. You want to finely chop them. And finally you want to grate some of the cheese. I'm using a cheddar. You could also use mozzarella, feta or some of the parmesan. You will also need some of the passata or you could use some chopped tomatoes. And here we've got some fresh basil leaves. Alright, let's start with cooking our chicken. Turn the heat to a medium. And with a good touch of oil. Grab your marinated chicken and make sure it's at room temperature. And all I said, the chicken always away from you. We're going to let the chicken cook for a few minutes on each side until the internal temperature has reached 75 Celsius or 165 Fahrenheit. It's best if you can purchase a thermometer. On a carefully turn the chicken.
Now throw in some of the compound butter. You can check out the recipe in one of my previous videos. Now tilt the pan slightly and you want to baste it for the remaining few minutes. Get the internal temperature read and we can see it's reached around 75 Celsius and now we can remove this. And we're going to finish cooking the next batch of our chicken. That looks so delicious, one of the best Cajun chicken with some of the compound butter. Now leave the chicken to rest while we cook our pasta. Now get the pan nice and clean in with a good touch of olive oil and make sure the heat is on medium. Go with the garlic, bird's eye chili, go with the red chili. Give that really good mix and flavor the oil. Make sure to use a good quality olive oil for this, the smell is amazing. And now we're going to throw our sun dried tomatoes. Just slowly add that in. And in with the red pepper. Let this cook for a few minutes and salt it. Oh, the aroma of sun dried tomatoes just on another level. This Cajun chicken pasta is going to be so so delicious. Now throw in your passata along with some of the water. Add a good touch of salt, black pepper, some of this Cajun spice, here with a few basil leaves. Now you want to give this a really good mix and let it cook on low medium heat for around 15 minutes. You want to get rid of some of the acidity from the tomatoes. Oh it smells great, it's best to leave it covered. And while the sauce is cooking let's boil our pasta. I'm just going to move this to a different heat. In boiling water add a good touch of salt. And for the pasta I'm using a penne. You want to let the pasta cook until it's al dente, meaning it still has a bite to it. Alright, let's check our sauce. Bismillah. The consistency of the sauce is perfect. It's exactly what we're looking for. And I'm going to get rid of the garlic and remove all the basil leaves. Now add a light touch of sugar in there helps to balance the acidity further. Leftover juices from the chicken. Now drain the pasta and goes into the sauce. You want to add some of the pasta water as well so we can balance the consistency. Touch of freshly grounded black pepper. Now give this a really good mix. Be careful not to break your pasta. Now throw in some of the cheese and continue to mix this. The water is going to help emulsify the sauce a bit. That's the sound you want to hear, it looks so so good. Just turn off the heat at this point. That looks so delicious, one of the best Cajun chicken that you will try. Now if you want, you can also use this chicken for your stir fries or serve some of the rice. Now you can mix in the chicken now, you can serve it separately. And give this a really good mix. And finally you can garnish it with some of the fresh basil leaves. Your delicious Cajun chicken pasta. Fire! Done. I'm gonna garnish the chicken with some of the fresh chives and chili. Now that looks so irresistible. One of the best Cajun chicken pasta you will ever try. For our small pizza bites, grab your toasted baguette and a good touch of tomato sauce onto there. This is not ketchup by the way. You just wanna spread that. A light touch of extra virgin olive oil. Here we go, some of the mozzarella. Some of this cheddar. Throw in some of the red chili if you like. You can also add some of the leftover chicken onto there. Season with a touch of black pepper and a bit more olive oil. Now you want to broil this into a preheated grill until the cheese is nicely melted. Now you can garnish it with some of the fresh chives. Our amazing small pizza bites. Done. They look so delicious.
this Cajun chicken pasta is perfect. I'm using a full chicken here, it's best to leave the skin on. Now if you want the skin to be more crispier, then you need to cure the chicken with a bit of the salt and leave it in the fridge overnight. This will dry out the excess moisture. But for today, I'm gonna skip this process. Maybe it's cause I'm lazy today. <laughs> Oh, now there's two main ways you can cut up this chicken. You can either do a spatchcock or you can do a reverse spatchcock. I'm gonna spatchcock the chicken but I'm gonna leave the bone inside. First I'm just gonna turn the chicken around. I'm gonna carefully cut this chicken in the middle. So grab your scissors, cut this through. Now turn the chicken around. We're gonna open it up. Put your hand on the breast and press it down until you hear that click. Add a good bit of salt onto there and some of this lemon pepper seasoning. Give that a really good massage and try to go under the skin as well. Now turn the chicken around and do the same from the other side. Once done, just set the chicken aside and let's prep our marinade. For the lemon and herb, very very marinade in with a red onion, few garlic cloves. Don't use too many for this marinade. As this is a mild type of pear pear marinade, so we're only gonna use few bird's eye chilies. Here I've got zest of fresh lemon. This lemon is quite large, so I'm just gonna use a bit of it. To be honest, this lemon looks bigger than my future. <laughs> Now in with the whole flesh of lemon without the seeds. I've also removed all the white part from the lemon. This will ensure there's no any bitterness in our marinade. It was some of this red chili paste. For the spices, I'm using a turmeric. It with a smoked paprika, cayenne pepper. It with a cracked mixed black pepper for more flavor. For the herbs, I'm using a rosemary, some of this fresh thyme. It with the oregano, some Italian parsley. We're gonna balance our flavors with some of the sugar. It with the salt, it with the white vinegar, some of this water, and finally with the oil. Now cover and blend this until the mixture is nice and smooth. Trust me when I say that this is one of the best lemon and herb marinade that you guys gonna try. The marinade is looking great, let's check this. Have a little taste. Mmm, that is so delicious. It has a strong lemon and herb flavor with a hint of chili. It's gonna go great with our chicken. Our mouth-watering lemon and herb berry berry marinade. Done. Now remove your seasoned chicken into your bowl. Now in with our berry berry marinade. We're going to use some of the marinade now and we're gonna brush some later. Trust me, this is one of the best lemon and herb berry berry chicken that you guys gonna try. Your mouth is gonna be absolutely watering by the end of this video. Now give this a really good mix with the help of your hands. Try to go under the skin as well and stuff the marinade. Make sure to cover both the front and the back with the marinade. Now you want to leave the chicken to marinate for a few hours or overnight for best results. Let the chicken absorb some of the marinade. Now you can either cook the chicken on charcoal or flame grill it, but I don't have that so I'm gonna grill it on the stove top and then finish in the oven. Turn up the heat on medium high, spray your griddle with a good touch of oil. You want to make sure everything is touching the griddle. Now you want to turn the chicken every four to five minutes. Let's get some good grilling marks on there. We're also searing the chicken you know locking those juices. Alright let's turn this. Smell So that looks great. Let's brush it with some more marinade. That looks so good. Like I said before, this is one of the best lemon and herb very, very chicken that you guys are gonna try. Alright, let's turn the chicken again. Carefully pick that up. And again, just make sure everything is touching the griddle. Some more marinade onto there. The chicken looks so, so good. And now we're gonna turn it one last time. Hold on. Looks amazing, now just turn off the heat. Finally, some more. I'm gonna remove the chicken into the oven tray. Lot of salt and pepper, and finally you wanna spray with the oil. 
Now this goes in a preheated oven at 220 Celsius and we're gonna let this cook until the internal temperature reaches 75 Celsius. And like I said before, this is one of the best bread bread chicken that you guys are gonna try. We're going to serve our halloumi fries with some of this pineapple mango dip. And with our mango slices, you will need around half a cup. Equal amount of pineapple in there. It with some water so we can blend this and finally some sugar. Come on and blend this into nice and sweet. Remove everything into this bowl. For a little bit of cake in with a red chili paste. Some of this fresh lime juice. Using it some of the fresh mint to add a bit more freshness. A bit of this fresh thyme as well. And finally we're gonna season it with some of the smoked paprika. Freshly cracked black pepper and a good pinch of sea salt. Now give that a really good mix and combine everything. Have a little taste and adjust anything if you need to. Mmm, that is so so good. Our delicious pineapple and mango dip. Done. Our mouth watering crispy halloumi fries. Grab a ball in with a plain flour. And with a smoked paprika. Good touch of black pepper in there. Some of this white pepper. And finally in with the salt and some of this MSG. Good mix to that. Our halloumi slices go straight in. Give them a good coat. Shake off the excess and these go straight into the hot oil. We're gonna let these fry until they're nice and golden brown. And now we have a beautiful color on these. Let's start removing them. Our mouth watching crispy halloumi fries. Done. Grab yourself a plate in with your crispy halloumi fries. Garnish it with some of this red chili. You should always make sure your food looks great and it tastes great. Some of these spring onion greens. Some of these fresh chives. And finally serving it with our pineapple and mango dip. Our mouth watering crispy halloumi fries. Done. For a mixed olive salad in with the calamari olives. It was some of these Bella di Saraginola olives. You could also use normal green olives instead. And you could also use some of the black olives. To add a bit more flavor, I'm using a sun-dried tomatoes. Fresh cherry tomatoes would work best as well. Some of these red chili flakes. It with the oregano, parsley, a good pinch of salt and finally some of this honey. Olives can be a bit bitter in taste, so of course we can balance that. Give them a really good mix. They look amazing. Now just set aside. We're going to serve our olive salad with a lemon vinaigrette. Super easy, in with the mustard. I'm gonna flavor it with some of the fresh garlic. In with the oregano, some of this mixed black pepper. Good pinch of salt in there. Give that a good mix and slowly mix in the oil. Now this has beautifully come together. Have a little taste. Mm, that is so fresh and so flavorful. And just anything if you need to. Have a mouth watering lemon vinaigrette. Done. In a plate you wanna add some of the lettuce leaves. Add in your beautiful olives. Of course, some of the feta cheese. You could also add some of the parmesan if you like. Some of our croutons. Drizzle of this extra virgin olive oil. And finally serving it with our amazing lemon vinaigrette. That looks so delicious. Our mouth-watering mixed olive salad with vinaigrette. Done. You guys are going to really enjoy this. And it's going to go amazing with our lemon and herb pepper chicken. Alright guys, our mouth-watering pepper chicken is done. Leftover juices from the chicken goes on the top. Looks so delicious. Alright, let's play this up with your peri peri chicken, our crispy halloumi fries, our mixed olive salad, pineapple and mango dip, some of this lemon vinaigrette, and finally of course some of the leftover marinade. You can cook it if you want. For the strawberry mojito, in with the strawberries. You want to muddle them. Fresh lime juice, some of the lemon juice as well. Some of this fresh mint, and with some of this grenadine, it has been mixed with some of the strawberry essence. Now in with the ice. And finally with the soda water. And finally I'm gonna garnish it with some of this strawberry. Looks so refreshing. Oh my mouth is watering right now. <laughs> Our delicious lemon and herb berry berry chicken. Duh. You and your family are gonna really enjoy this berry berry chicken. show you how to make one of the best KFC chicken bites. Fatality. Let's start with the chicken. I'm using a chicken breast. First of all, using my hand, I'm going to remove the tenders. They should come off easily. Now place your hand on the chicken and you want to cut through the middle. Let the knife do the job and make sure it's sharp. 
Now again, you wanna cut through the middle and slice into bite-sized pieces. Always make sure the chicken is nice and clean. There's no excess fat before you use it. This is exactly what you're looking for, not too small and not too large. Once done, just remove the chicken onto a bowl. Now in that, we're gonna mix in some of the hot sauce. Use Tabasco or any of your favorite sauce. Good touch of salt in there. I'm also gonna add some of the black pepper in there. Give this a really good mix. Now let the hot sauce do its thing and leave the chicken to brine for a few hours in the fridge. For the sweet chili sauce. In with the water and with the sugar. Mix and completely melt that sugar. Now in with the vinegar. It with the chili flakes, fresh red chili, garlic, paprika, touch of salt. Give that a mix. And you want to let it simmer for a few minutes. Excellent. Now when it start to simmer, turn the heat to low with a good touch of soy sauce. Now in with this cornstarch. Slowly mix that in. This will thicken the sauce. Now you want to bring this to boil to cook and activate the cornstarch. Once it starts to boil, just turn off the heat. Have a flavorful sweet chili sauce. Done. Let's have a little taste. A bit sweet, a bit spicy. Amazing. For a spicy barbecue sauce, turn up the heat around medium low. Here with the molasses sugar, some of this brown sugar. Here with the ketchup, use a good quality one. You want to slowly mix and combine the two. Now molasses is what is responsible for the dark brownish color of the barbecue sauce. Now we're gonna flavor with some yellow mustard, a mild type of vinegar, and it doesn't have to be too strong. Here with the Worcester sauce. Here with the soy sauce for the umami flavor. Chipotle chili paste. Now we're gonna season it with garlic and onion powder, bird's eye chili, paprika, freshly ground black pepper, and finally a pinch of the sea salt. Now you want to give this a really good mix and bring everything together. And we're gonna let the sauce simmer for a few minutes. This will ensure any rawness of the spices is cooked and you can always adjust the consistency. Our right, so our sauce is ready, just turn off the heat, have a little taste. Mm. of a delicious spicy barbecue sauce. Fatality. Done. For the Nashville hot of go ahead, cayenne pepper, smoked paprika, garlic powder, onion, freshly cracked black pepper, salt with the MSG, and finally with the dark brown sugar. Now give this a really good mix. And finally we can mix in the hot oil when we are just about to serve. Make sure the oil is not too hot, otherwise the spices will burn. Have a mouthwatering Nashville hot glaze. Done. Have a little taste and adjust anything if you need to. Now for the dredge in with the plain flour. Let's season in with the black pepper, white pepper as well. It with the celery powder, mustard, garlic and ginger powder. It with the smoked paprika, some of this onion powder, oregano, thyme and basil. And finally in with the salt and MSG. Give that a really good mix and set aside. Now another about cracking two eggs. It with the plain flour and water. Season with salt, a touch of black pepper. Now give that a really good mix and ensure they're not lumps. This is exactly what we're looking for, it's nice and smooth. Set that aside. And finally, in another bowl, you will need just a plain flour, touch of salt and black pepper. Mix and set aside. All right, let's go with the chicken. Grab your seasoned flour, flour batter, some of the plain flour, and your chicken. Remove the chicken from fridge 20 minutes before you start cooking it. All right, first the chicken will go into the plain flour. We're gonna lightly coat it. Give that a good mix. And now get rid of the excess flour. Just gonna use a sieve to remove all the flour. And now this goes into the batter. Get a good coat of that. And I'll get rid of the excess batter and we're gonna start removing it into a seasoned flour. Make sure to shake it as you go along. And I'm just gonna give this a really good mix with my hands. Make sure to press onto the flour so it will stick to it. Right, so that's exactly what we're looking for. Now this goes straight into the hot oil. The oil temperature needs to be around 160 Celsius and we're gonna maintain that temperature. I'm gonna slowly start loading our chicken into there. Always away from you. Now we're gonna let the chicken cook for around five to six minutes until we have a nice golden brown color. The internal temperature should reach 75 Celsius. The chicken smells so good. You guys gonna really enjoy this. All right, so the chicken looks beautiful. We're gonna start removing this. Just drain off the excess oil and remove it on a rack. Trust me, these are one of the best chicken bites that you're gonna try. Our crispy chicken bites. Done. One of the best chicken bites that you guys are gonna try. Flawless victory. Now for our mac and cheese in boiling water, I'm gonna add a good little salt. Here with the macaroni pasta. 
Let this cook for around 10 minutes. Now for this recipe, you don't want it all dente. You want to overcook it slightly. I'm just going to move that to a different heater. Let's prep our sauce. Turn up the heater on low medium. It with the evaporated milk and some of this double cream. Give that a mix and we're going to bring this to simmer. Now while that's coming to simmer, let's add our seasoning. Black pepper, smoked paprika, cayenne pepper, garlic, salt and so on. I'm also going to add some of this mustard in there and some Tabasco. Oh, now we can see that has started to simmer. Now we're going to throw in our cheese. I'm using it a mix of cheddar, red Leicester and mozzarella. Some of the pasta water and give that a really good mix. This mac and cheese is going to be so cheesy and so creamy and it's so easy to make. Or right, the cheese has beautifully melted. You can just turn off the heat at this point. Have a little taste of the sauce. Mm. Now our pasta goes straight in. Touch of black pepper. A pinch of salt. Now if you guys prefer you can also mix in some of the butter in there. Give that a really good mix. Oh, that looks amazing but we're not done yet. Here I've got a large ramekin. Add the pasta into the ramekin. Add some of the cheese and finally some more pasta and some more cheese. Now you can bake this in the oven or microwave on full heat until the cheese is nice and melted. Now you can garnish it with some of the tortilla chips and spring onion greens. Our mouth-watering mac and cheese. Done. Impressive. Alright, so this is how we're gonna serve them. Add the chicken pieces. Add the barbecue sauce for the first one. It will be best just to drizzle the sauce, you know, don't coat it completely. Sweet chili for the second one. And finally our natural hog glaze for the last one. These look amazing. You guys are gonna love these chicken bites. They look so much better than KFCs. After you try these chicken bites, you don't need to go KFC. Trust me. Flawless victory. Alright, let's play this up with your chicken bites. And finally with our creamy mac and cheese. Finally, I'm gonna garnish with some of the spring onion greens. Our delicious crispy chicken bites with three different flavors. Done. Oh, these look so delicious. Look at those. Flawless Whoa. victory. I'm gonna show you how to make one of the best lamb chops ever. Let's start with marinating our lamb. I'm using it a full rack of front lamb chops that should give you at least 12 to 13 pieces. You could also use back lamb chops for this. Of our seasoning, I'm gonna start with a bit of this truffle salt. Just a little bit of it, you know, just to get a hint of the truffle flavor. Totally optional. It with the Hawaiian sea salt, cumin powder, cayenne pepper, and finally some coarsely ground black pepper. Now give that a really good mix and combine everything. The ground cumin, pepper, all the other spices are gonna go really well together with our lamb. I'm gonna grab your seasoning and season for both sides generously. Cover all sides, don't waste any seasoning. And make sure to tap on the seasoning. Trust me, these are one of the best lamb chops that you're gonna try. We're gonna keep it simple, but it's gonna be so much flavorful. Now, if there's any fat on your lamb chops, then you need to render it before you start cooking. Or you could just get rid of the fat, it's really up to you. Now, it's best if you leave the lamb to marinate for at least an hour. For the beetroot puree, in with the cooked beetroot, touch of this tamarind paste to add a bit of tanginess. It was a zest of fresh lemon and some of the lemon juice. Some of these mint leaves has a bit of freshness and a bit of this parsley. You want to season this with a touch of salt and freshly ground black pepper. Now cover and blend this until nice and smooth. And now we're just gonna pass it through a sieve to make it more nice and smooth. This will be amazing with our lamb. It can also be served with salads or chicken. Now that looks gorgeous. Have a little taste and adjust any seasoning if you need to. Have amazing beetroot puree. Done. Oh, now for the potatoes, you want to peel and slice them into quarter pieces. And now we're going to parboil them until they are 70% done and they still have some resistance to it. This should take you around 6-7 to seven minutes in boiling water. I'll grab a pan in with the butter. The heat is on low medium. It with a mix of beef and chicken stock. Throw in the green peas and your parboiled potatoes. Give that a mix and you want to let these cook until they are completely done. One of our potatoes and peas are done. I'm gonna pass them through a sieve to remove the excess stock. I'm gonna use this stock later for our sauce. On its cook of a lamb chop, turn the heat around medium. Here with a good touch of oil. And when the pan is nice and hot, we're gonna start adding our lamb chops. And like I said, if there is any fat on your lamb chops, then you need to render that first. And there you go, bismillah. Now don't overcrowd the pan, alright? Let's start with the four in here. Now how do you like your lamb chops? You like it medium? You like it well done? I'm gonna do it well done, so it should take two or two and a half minutes on each side. Just make sure everything is touching the pan. We want to get a nice air on those lamb chops. 
Trust me, these are one of the best lamb chops that you're gonna try. Your mouth is gonna be absolutely watering. All right, so it's time to turn these around. Bismillah, look at that beautiful sear, look at that. Perfect. Turn these around. And again, just make sure everything is touching the pan, all right? Beautiful, look at that. Now we're gonna let these cook for the remaining time. And just in the last minute or so, I'm just gonna throw in our butter. Some of our smashed garlic and some of these tricks of thyme. You know, basting is very important. Give that a good mix. Move the lamb chops to one side. And now just tilt your pan slightly and baste it for the last minute. And these lamb chops look absolutely mouth-watering. I'm just gonna turn them around and get a nice color on this side as well. Oh, so the lamb chops are done, I'm just gonna remove them. Into a beautiful plate. Now give the pan a quick wipe and cook the next batch of your lamb chops. Beautiful sear again, amazing. You need to make sure your pan is nice and hot, otherwise you won't get this beautiful sear. Alright guys, let the lamb rest for a few minutes before serving. And in the same pan, add some more butter. And the leftover stock. A light touch of Worcester sauce. Season with freshly grown black pepper and a light touch of salt and finally add in some of the mustard. And give that a mix and let it simmer for a minute. Our amazing black pepper mustard sauce. Done. For our salad we're gonna start with the cucumbers. Here I've got many cucumbers that you want to cut into quarters lengthways. I'm gonna place the quarters in a bowl and sprinkle over the salt and just toss them around. Allow them to sit for at least 10 to 15 minutes before rinsing the cucumbers well in cold water. And I'll just set them aside on a drying cloth skin side down. Here I've got many sweet peppers. Cut them in half and discard all the seeds. Use a spoon, it will be much easier to remove them. Now place them in a bowl, add a touch of cayenne pepper, freshly ground black pepper and salt, give it a good touch of olive oil. And give that a mix. I'm gonna place them onto a baking tray and broil them in the oven until they are nice and soft. I'm gonna place your charred softened peppers back into the bowl. Touch of this honey to cut through the bitterness. And finally some of this dried oregano. Give that a mix. And I'll just set aside and let them cool completely. Now in another bowl, in with the boiled chickpeas. It with a preserved lemon. It with a hot sauce, cumin, black pepper, salt, and a light touch of olive oil. Give that a really good mix and set aside. Alright guys, let's plate up our salad. It was some of this Greek yogurt. Touch of this paprika. It with the baby spinach and lamb's lettuce. It was some of these juicy tomatoes. Add our amazing charred peppers. Our delicious salted cucumbers. Our mouth-watering chickpeas along with a preserved lemon. Oh, it looks so delicious. Also, some of these roasted split chickpeas, you know, it's gonna add a bit of that crunch. When just about to serve, season with a light pinch of salt and pepper. Add some fresh mint and parsley. Some of these thinly sliced beetroot. And finally, some balsamic vinegar. Have a delicious salad. Done. It looks so mouth watering. Or, guess let's plate up our lamb chops. Add some of the beetroot puree on the plate to start with. And we're just gonna make a round spiral. Here with the amazing lamb chops. Add some of the potatoes and the peas.
This butter chicken is creamy, rich, so delicious. Alright, the butter chicken has two parts to it. Tandoori chicken and the spiced tomato and butter sauce. We're going to start with the tandoori chicken and the first process is to marinate the chicken with some lemon and salt. Here I'm using full chicken legs, using the chicken with the bone, you know just keeping the traditions. If you want you could use thighs or breast instead. I've added a few cuts to the chicken so we can marinate it properly down to the bone. Always bed dry the chicken before you marinate it. Add a good touch of salt onto there. Now in that I like to add some fine zest of lemon. You can totally skip this. And finally with a fresh lemon juice. We use lemon juice mainly to neutralize any bad aroma and it also helps tenderize the chicken along with the salt. Give that a really good mix using your hands. Now you want to leave the chicken to rest for at least an hour and let's make our tandoori marinade. Grab another ball in with the natural yogurt and with a paste of fresh garlic. We're also going to use some of the ginger paste and with the black rock salt. It has an umami flavor. And with the garam masala, coriander powder, red chili, Kashmiri red chili mainly to add a bit of the color. And with the mango and lemongrass powder. Touch of this cumin and with the black pepper. Good pinch of salt and finally some of this fenugreek powder. Now give that a really good mix and combine everything. I forgot to add the oil so throw that in. This butter chicken is gonna be so delicious. You guys gonna absolutely love this. Have a little taste of the marinade. That is so delicious. Now grab the chicken and this goes straight into the marinade. Make sure to get rid of the excess water from the chicken before adding this in. Now again give this a really good mix with your beautiful hands. And try to stuff those cuts with the marinade. Now you want to cover and leave the chicken to marinate for at least 3 hours. Let the chicken absorb some of the marinade and the flavors. Trust me it's gonna be so good. Now let's prep the main ingredients for our sauce. Here I'm using one large onion. Thinly slice the onion. Make a paste of ginger garlic. Here I've got the fresh tomatoes. Get rid of this core from the center. And now just roughly chop the tomatoes. Here I've got the thin green chili that you want to slice in the middle. Get rid of the seeds if you don't like it too hot. And finally I've got some of the fresh coriander that you want to finely chop. We're also going to use the cashew paste to add a bit of thickness and richness to our sauce. In my opinion it's better to blend this beforehand so we can get more flavor into the sauce. For the spices I'm using a red chili powder, garam masala, cumin powder and finally some of this fenugreek powder. We're going to add the salt later. Or right, let's grab everything. You will also need to use butter and this double or heavy cream. On a let's get cooking. First you want to grab the marinated chicken and let it come to room temperature. Grab your oven tray that is aligned with the grill. You might need to brush it with oil just to ensure nothing will stick to it. Now start placing your marinated chicken onto the grill. Make sure there's some space in between them. Pinch of salt and pepper, light at your foil. Now you want to broil the chicken under a preheated grill until the internal temperature has reached 75 celsius or 165 Fahrenheit. Make sure to turn it halfway. On right, to cook our sauce, turn up the heater on medium. And with half of the butter, I'm gonna use the other half later. I like that your foil so the butter won't burn. And with your onions, you wanna saute the onions so we're looking for a light golden brown color. A light pinch of salt. If anything is burning, you can always deglaze with a touch of water. Now throw in your ginger garlic paste and just one of the green chili. Give that a mix and cook the rawness of the paste as well. The aroma of these beautiful onion ginger garlic is so so good. Now deglaze it with a touch of water. Cover for a few seconds to kill the smell of the raw garlic. Check this. And aim with your tomatoes. Throw in the whole fresh coriander, a few bay leaves. Add the cashew paste as well. Now cover and let this cook for around 5-6 to six minutes. Alright let's check our tandoori chicken. It looks great. Now turn the chicken around. Spray with a light touch of oil again. And this goes back into the grill for another 10-15 to 15 minutes. Alright now let's check this. You want to let this mixture cook until the oil separates. And now I can see the oil has started to separate from the mixture. At this point of time I'm going to remove the coriander and the bay leaves. Add some water into there and turn off the heat. Let the mixture cool down a bit before you blend this. Alright let's check out tandoori chicken. Just gonna get an internal temperature read and we can see it's reached around 75 celsius. Let the chicken rest for a few minutes before we cut into it. Wanna cut the chicken into medium pieces. Finish up with a little bit of this tandoori masala. Now remove the chicken pieces into a bowl, place a lighted up charcoal onto there, add a touch of foil and immediately cover with a foil paper or an object and let the chicken smoke for at least 15 to 20 minutes. It's gonna add a beautiful aroma to our butter chicken. Now slowly strain the sauce back into the pan. We're looking for a nice smooth texture. Add some of this honey to balance the acidity. You could also use sugar instead. Now bring the sauce to gentle simmer. The heat is on low medium. One of the best butter chicken that you will ever try. Now when the sauce starts to simmer, we're gonna throw in all of our spices. Give that a really good mix and you wanna cook the rawness of those spices. 
This is where the magic happens. And a good bit of salt. Remaining green chili. And our amazing tandoori chicken. Oh man, that looks so, so good. Now again, give this a really good mix and let it cook on low, medium heat for around five minutes. This is the best time to check for any seasoning as well. That's perfect. Oh man, the butter chicken looks so, so delicious. Now finally, we're gonna throw in some more butter and let them melt. And I just turn off the heat and I'm gonna mix in the cream. And this color is exactly what we're looking for. It looks so mouth watering. This is how you make an authentic butter chicken. This recipe is to die for. Now you can garnish it with some of the fenugreek leaves, a bit more cream, and finally some of this fresh coriander. I have a mouth-watering butter chicken. Done, it looks so delicious. All right, let's plate this up, serving it with some of this naan bread, some of this boiled basmati rice, and finally we got our butter chicken. Authentic mouth-watering butter chicken right here. It looks so, so delicious. I really can't wait to try this. I guess I'm gonna try this. It looks so mouth watering. You guys are gonna really enjoy this. I'm gonna try some of the sauce with the rice first. Bismillah. Wow. Mmm. So, so delicious. The sauce is perfectly cooked and along with those rice, it's just on another level. This is the type of the dish that you need to cook for your wife or your husband. The sauce is so rich and creamy, it has a bit of this tandoori taste to it. And now I'm gonna try the chicken with some of this naan bread. Chicken is perfectly cooked, just falls off the bone. Bismillah. Wow. Mm. That is just unbelievable. I really admire those chefs who invented this. This is so good, guys. This will make a perfect dinner for your family and friends. You know what, I'm really lost in this butter chicken. It is just amazing. The sauce has just the right amount of spice to it. The flavors are 10 out of 10. All right guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe, make sure you like. Inshallah, see you next time. Until then, salam. Make for your mom, make for your dad, make for your family. Enjoy.